Would you join with me? Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for March 28, 2016. Do we have any public comment? Mr. Preston, how are you tonight? Hello, Mr. Brian, how about yourself? Just fine. I'll be very quick. April Fools is upon us Friday. So just let everybody know the state starts tagging at all the parking meters down the beach. So just let the buy beware. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Anybody else from the public? Seeing none, I'll bring it to the board for announcements and community calendar. Yes, I wanted to say that I attended last Friday night the Hampton Beach precinct meeting, the annual meeting. They voted their, they elected their officials in and they passed their two ballots. And I was talking to some of them after the meeting and they're all eager for a uh, great summer. And I think it's going to be a good year for them. Very good. Set. No, I also was at the meeting. It was... Uh, Everything went very smoothly, and it was nice to see Regina there taking such an interest. Good. Bill? I have no comments. Thank you, sir. The only thing I have is tonight, this evening, uh, from 5 o'clock till 9 at the Community Oven, right. there is a fundraiser for uh, Kyle Jamison, who's a uh, Hampton firefighter who is uh, uh, battling cancer, and there is a fundraiser up there. If anybody would like to go up and make a donation, it would be greatly appreciated. Okay, next we will have consent agenda. We have number one, 2016 veteran requalifications. Number two is 2016 new veterans. We have number three, 2016 new veteran spouse. Four, 2016 elderly requalifications. Number five, 2016 new elderly. Number six, 2016 new disabled. Number seven, permits for use of town property. It's a parking lot at the Ashworth for the reach of the beach on 917 and a wedding ceremony at Ruth Simpson Park at 9-4. Number eight is a parade and public gathering license for the reach of the beach on 917 and the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce for the Children's Festival for 8-19-2006. We have entertainment licenses and posted permits, one for Sea Catch Restaurant, two for Millie's Tavern on L Street. And number 10 is the acceptance of $1,500 donation from Loco Sports to Parks and Recreation Programs. I move the agenda. Okay, second. I'm at second that. Second, all those in favor? Unanimous. Appointments, Christy Pullen. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, Christy. Feel like it's been a while since I've been here. You guys got to see a lot of me, then took a little break. So <laughs> I am here to present the monthly financials for the for February. Going forward this year, I believe I'm scheduled for the third Monday, so I'll be in a little sooner, which will I'd be nice, I think, because. A lot of people get confused when I get so close to the end of the month. They sometimes think I'm reporting on this month, but I don't have that information yet. So um, it's the second report of 2016, and the target is 16.67%. The month's total income was 431000 Of that total, um, motor vehicles came in at 252000 which is over target by about a little over $4,000. The other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at 12,000, building permits at 24,000, state of New Hampshire water pollution control at 22,000, and departmental income at 15,000, franchise fees at 61,000, and the real estate trust at 35,000. Um, I did want to, at this point, discuss on the revenue budget, you will see that I added a new column uh, for 2016. And it's called 2016 Adjusted Budget. 
when the auditors were here, they suggested that um, we adjust the revenue budget as we go through the year. Um, for DRA, we do estimated revenues as of August 31st, they're due September 1 to the state. And then we also adjust them once again when we're setting the tax rate, which obviously will help to reduce the tax rate if the revenues are greater than what we have estimated. So I will, I think I'm gonna do it on a quarterly basis. It doesn't make sense to adjust them monthly, but to satisfy a recommendation made by the auditors, I will be adjusting the um, projected income on lines where it appears to be appropriate throughout the year. So that is why that has been added to your financials if anyone noticed that. Let's see, the expense summary shows that the year-to-date expenses by department. At the end of February, the operating departments without debt service but with open POs were 15.81% of the budget, which is under the month's target by 0.86% or $206,000. The departments as a whole are running under the target of 16.7. Uh, I will point out for this month the, those line items that are over target but related to quarter, quarterly, semi-annual, and annual payments. On um, the page one and two, you'll see the town manager and the finance department. Both of those OT lines are fairly high at this point. Uh, one is at 40% and finance is at 87.97. That's related those two departments, basically, the majority of their overtime is in the end of um, the year and running into the beginning of the year for uh, end of year um, in the town manager's office for the deliberative session, preparing the town report. In my office, they're getting ready for audit and all of that. So those lines are expended, but that's when most of the overtime occurs. Um, on page three in MIS, the new equipment line is at 47.45%. That's related to the 2015 encumbrance for the new computers. In personnel administration, on page three, the uh, bank buyback program is at 93.51%, uh, which is normal because that is paid out usually the second or third payroll in January. So that's like a line item that's used basically once a year. So. Municipal insurance, both workers' compensation and membership dues are over target, and that's related to semi-annual and annual payments for the dues. The police department is at 12.12% overall with the open purchase orders. Fire department is at 13.27% with purchase orders. Uh, the only account that I noted there was staff development. That one is over the target. Uh, on page nine, other services is at 48.06, and that's the semi-annual payment for the hydrants to Aquarian. So we pay that in January and July right now. Page 10 and 11, highways and streets is at 12.21% overall with open purchase orders. And the only account that was noted there was under administration, uh, rentals and leases. On page 11 and 12, municipal sanitation is re running below target. It's at 16.19%, and some accounts to note in this section under administration would be part-time wages and under the transfer station, staff development, and supplies and expenses. On page 15, it's updated with all the Warren articles that were passed at the town meeting. You will see all of those in there along with uh, the few that were carried over. Um, I think there was one or two from 14 and then a couple from 15 that the board had voted at the end of the year to carry forward. Uh, let's see, the 2015 encumbrances are showing that 21% have been expended to date. Fund 24 for the Recreation Department, the beach sticker donations year to date equal $2,220, and the fund balance has increased slightly from the 15 ending balance. Cable Committee fund balance is slightly above the, the 2015 ending balance at 38522 Fund 26 for private detail, the current fund balance is 118184 or just slightly below the 15 ending balance, but that's one of those ones that grows a lot during the summer because it's uh, funded through private details. We're not doing as many details over the winter months. EMS fund, the balance in this account continues to grow and is at $464,442. And the wastewater system development charge, um, fees collected in 16 total 1,596 with the balance in that account of 115,000, 
and the board did approve an additional $50,000 in expenditures from this fund at their last meeting. So that's not reflected on there, but you did approve $50,000 for the um, pipe out in the marsh that was leaking. And I think that's it for the monthly finances. I don't know if you guys have any questions. Start with you, Phil. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director. Great job. Uh, and uh, I have no questions uh, at this early stage of the year. And thank you for your uh, handouts uh, to us on the uh, GASPI um, as it relates to going forward. Uh, that was very instructive. And thank you. Rick? Thank you for your report. You do a great job. And I'm um, glad to see that we uh, you're able to make it so easy for us. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the report, Christy, and everything seems like it's in, and, and you talk about boring time of year, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll get more those, exciting, I promise. <laughs> those semi-annual and stuff. And I think, though, you know, one thing that hits me, and I think that we all have to start thinking about is for the last couple of years, an increase in revenue has been because of vehicles, right? Yes. Because and car sales are up, right? And building permits. Those yeah. are the two areas. And those are two areas that when the economy starts to turn around, Right. are going to kind of maybe go down. So that's something yeah. that we have to start thinking about, that they're not going to raise every year. That's not going to be an increase in a, in a real value to us. The other thing that I just wanted to bring up, which I think is important, if you might be able to explain a little bit, the Gatsby rule as, as, as uh, relates to the pensions. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change our finances at all, right? Correct. But it's going to make us it make it look... Liability. Liability, it's going to make it look like we've got a larger liability, and I think the public has to know that, that that's coming, and that nothing's changed. Right. It's just that they're making us show part of the liability, the UAAL or whatever. Yes, the liability. Yep. The liability of the unfunded. I uh, can uh, post this up on where I post my monthly financials, because I think, I mean, I can read through it also, but I think a lot of times when people read this, I actually went back through and highlighted, so I right. could do an even shorter little cheat sheet yeah. than what I gave you guys and just post the... I'll post the whole thing, but with the highlights, and then right. everyone, anyone who's interested would be able to read it and understand it a little better. I think that would be a really good idea, and I, I think it would be a good idea. Is it on, It's on the website probably, right, or we can put it on the website? I, that's what I said. I'll post it with the, I'm sorry. I'll post it up on the website where okay. I post the monthly financials. Yeah. I can just add this right, up right. there so that people can uh, read through it. Right. It's and on the it, NHRS website, but you have to dig a little. Yeah. And if so. anybody, you know, has questions, I think it, it's good for them to ask the questions, the public, because it'll make it look a little worse, but it's not any worse. Correct. And yeah. it's good to know we will be in compliance right when we're supposed to be, because it would be GASB 68, you were supposed to be in compliance with it starting for the uh, fiscal year ending June 30th of 15. So obviously that would be our December 31st calendar year. And I have confirmed with Scott um, at Plodzik and Sanderson that they have received the report. They did the additional um, testing while they were here. So we will be in compliance right. when the um, 2015 audit comes out. I think, I think sometimes people panic, you know, when they see yes. that, even when they see the statewide that it's, it's, it's unfunded $5 billion or something, they think Correct. that that's due today and it's not due today, that's future. Right. And I think that's really important for people to understand. So thank you. Yeah, and I think it, um, along with that line, Jim, I think it says right here that um, this has been referred to as the divorcing of accounting from funding. So right. it has yeah. nothing to do with how it's, they, everyone knows that we helped to fund the, their deficit up in there um, when, when they increased the rates. But this GASB is not related to the funding mechanism. It's literally related to the reporting and the liability. Thank you. Okay. Regina? I have uh, no questions. Thank you very much. Yeah. I was just one, the uh, the EMS fund. Yes. Now, is that funds we actually have in there, or is that what we potentially can collect? It's in, the, What we potentially can collect is included in there. Right, so that's not what we actually have in that fund. Correct. I just want to make sure that known. So it's right, we do a journal entry to adjust the revenue so that it's uh, closer in line with what we believe that we will be expecting. And we, uh, Fred, I believe, brought to the board, and we have written off <coughs> everything that um, going forward, and so there will never be anything more than like the three years right. that's collectible on the books. Okay. So we that uh, fund is under control in the sense that we do not have outstanding um, invoices going back to what was it like 2004 I believe oh, last yeah, year way back. so we've cleaned all of that up um, and there is um, the revenue is adjusted appropriately on a monthly basis okay so that's that, that's that. just different than how we've done it in the past yes. before we uh, as you said we carried years 
10 years or better. Right, it was of, 2004 when I started, I Right, think. and that should have never been on there, and you've right. cleaned that up, and you've done an excellent job at that. that up, yes. So, Suckman Bean, you had a question? Yeah, uh, that uh, Jim raised a good point on the gas fee. It's not on the uh, agenda, but we brought it up, and it's interesting, the... Uh, a liquor store, an examination of their financials, and you compare and contrast government agencies, that is a $0.7 billion corporation because of uh, this gas fee phenomena. They went from a net position of $9 million uh, to uh, negative, uh, so they're, they're down about $20 million on their balance sheet. It's an important consideration. It doesn't affect revenue, but it, it is a liability. And comparing our town, our net position is uh, $50 million. So our little town of Hampton uh, is run very well. Uh, Mr. Welch and uh, his department heads and the citizens and taxpayers do a fantastic job. And this is one heck of a corporation. Jim, thanks for bringing that up. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anything else? Um, in your packet to sign tonight, I just want to let you know you have your M the MS-232, which is the report of appropriations actually voted. So I don't know if you want me to go over any of that. It's pretty simple. <coughs> um, I have three totals I can just run through real That's quick so for you. It was. It's just showing that the total appropriations were twenty-eight million eight hundred and sixty thousand three hundred thirty-eight dollars. Um, of that total, the budget was twenty-six million five hundred ninety-nine thousand four hundred thirty-one, and warrant articles totaled two million two hundred sixty thousand nine hundred seven dollars. So it's a very simple item, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys all knew why it was there, and um, it's just something we do every year after the. Votes are in. So you have to make a motion to sign this, or is it just you do on that one? Yes. Yeah. So uh, it says statutorily required. Yeah. Motion to go ahead and sign it. I make a motion. We sign it. Second. Se second. All those in favor? Yeah. Now, just so the public knows, yes. that's you fill out that and send it to DRA. DRA is. The Department of Revenue. Yeah, no, I just want the public. Yep. When the public's listening sometimes, when we use acronyms, Sorry. you know, they're saying, oh, oh, yeah. what the heck are they talking about? Yeah, it's a form for the Department of Revenue Administration. Yeah. So when we go to set the tax rate, it will become a piece of the puzzle along with the revenues. Right, I just, just I'm not that dumb, really. I just want the public to know. <laughs> so what percentage does it look like uh, from the new things that were voted? What type of percentage would I you... I didn't do that yet, sorry. I can get that back to you on that. I haven't put it in to see what the tax rate, what the tax rate is going to Yeah, come. well, I mean, what what's like an estimate? Did it go up? Did it go down? I mean... I haven't looked at it honestly yet, so I, I can't say. I can get back to you on that, though. Okay, I'll go put, I appreciate it. it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. All set. All right. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. night. Next person is Brian McCain, Cable Committee. Committee update. Now that's punctual. He likes to make a dramatic entrance. <laughs> Good evening. Um, last Wednesday we had a uh, on our uh, committee meeting, and uh, this is one of the first ones we've ever televised. I don't know if you guys saw it, uh, but we discussed because of the new funding. We wanted to just, you know, go over anything we could think of that might help Channel 22. And what we thought, uh, one of the first things we thought about is maybe getting, well, we'd like to get a part-time media coordinator, such as John Justin over at uh, SAU 90. Um, this person would be, it would be 20 hours a week at the most, at $20 an hour to start. Uh, their duties would be to, you know, day-to-day -day operations. Uh, they could be available to do uh, department videos for, say, the rec department, the fire department, the police department, anything they need. Uh, PSAs. Um, also, somebody that could research new equipment, see what we need here, see what's, uh, what's new and exciting. Um, also... Somebody that could uh, keep a running inventory of what we have, uh, develop a maintenance schedule and a replacement schedule for the equipment that we have. Uh, that's something we can't do right now because, I mean, everybody who works here has a full-time job. So there's nobody here to be during the day so they can make calls and, and such. Um, 
This person would do the scheduling, the slides, uh, posting of all videos. Um, we haven't decided, you know, we haven't looked into qualifications yet. We're going to take a uh, look at SU 90's uh, sheet that they had uh, put out for their for their qualifications for their uh, for John. Um, it's just something we were thinking about, and we, we, we think if you want Channel 22 to advance, I mean, it could stay the way it is, slowly advance and, you know, get better here and there. But if you, if you want it to get better, you want better programming, you want more programming, you want, uh, you know, better studio, all this, I think you need somebody here uh, on a, you know, a 20-hour a week at the most. It could be, a, you know, they could work 20 hours one week, they can work... Four hours the next week. It depends on the schedule. What what's going on? But uh, there'd be no benefits, nothing like that. Um, the other thing we talked about was to hire a consultant to uh, assess the uh, weaknesses of our system and our our um, the way we do things around here. Basically, uh, come in here, check out this room, check out the. Um, the equipment we have in there and tell us what, what we're doing wrong because uh, not that we're doing a lot wrong but I know we're, we've got issues we have issues with the cameras in here we have it's not great it's not a great picture it's a decent picture but it's not a great picture and I don't know if it's because of the walls or what but that's something we need to have somebody come in here and tell us what what we need to make it a better channel uh, another thing we were talking about was uh, replacing some of the aging quit equipment that We've put off because of funding. We didn't. We didn't see it critical to do. But it's you know we have some cameras that are good cameras, but they're over 10 years old. Uh, we have we have a our uh, wireless headsets that we use at all the deliberatives and everything. And we only have two working right now. The rest of them are well, they they kind of work if you duct tape them. Um, and uh, one of the last things was a uh, we talked about was a studio for SAU 90, so they can do their own meetings. Uh, they can get actually they can get the uh, they were the kids involved. I talked to Dave O'Connor, and he's looking for uh, because the uh, school didn't go through. He wasn't sure where they were going to put one, but he has been looking uh, throughout the building. Someplace they could put something on a temporary basis or. Well, not temporary, but they could remove it when it's time, when they do get their new building. Uh, the only other thing I, I have is a, um, and I did forget to put this in on the agenda um, and give you a, a um, heads up on it, was we need a lock for the uh, beach fire station where we have the other studio in the, uh, where we have all the equipment. There is a lock there, but it's a key lock, and to get it, we have to bother bother the firemen every time, and sometimes they're not there. So uh, that's the only other thing. And, and if you want me to wait on this, I'll get it together, give you the, the sheets. Um, but if we can go ahead with it today, I can get it ordered. It's We've already got a quote from uh, A&B Locksmith for $675.50. But um, I'm willing to wait. I'm going to be coming in front of you another couple weeks anyway, so that's up to you. Well, that's what I got to say. Um, I like the idea of, um, of using a consultant to, uh, to find what the weaknesses are and, and maybe have um, something to offer uh, of, you know, what you do need. If you do need maybe a, a person um, that had, you know, like a 20 hour, you know, maybe they could help determine that. Um, but <clears throat> I, for one, um, am very happy with the job that you do and all the other guys and people that are here do. And um, I am not in favor of expanding uh, Channel uh, 22 to more than it is. I think it's, yeah. it serves the public very good. I mean, I'm just one, so I'm just putting throwing this out there. Mm -hmm. I, th I like it the way that it is. Um, and I, I think it is, you know, it slowly gets better and it slowly evolves, and I'm always amazed that there's something new and different on it. So I think you do a great job. 
and I do like the idea of a consultant that could come in and give you some pointers of what might make life easier. And um, I have w one thing I'm curious is if the school did have their own um, studio, as you say, would would there be less work that you're doing over there? Well, we wouldn't do. They would take care. They would do. They would do everything. They would do their school board meeting over there. Right now, they, they really can't. I mean, they used to do it at Marston years ago, but it's not adequate. They don't have a, a, a projector to do their uh, uh, PowerPoint presentations or anything, and it's just tight. You can only have one camera, and they're shooting down the table, and it's very difficult. So are you doing things over there to help no, out? No, we don't. No. But I mean, he, we, we used to do their, um, their um, deliberative session, but now John does that because... It's usually pretty short. It's only usually, well, the last one we did was eight minutes, so we don't we don't do that anymore. Uh, but they were thinking of putting a studio there, uh, in the in the cafeteria, which would benefit them and also us because we do the budget the the budget meeting there every year, their public meeting, and we could use. I already talked to John. He says, well, if you have it there, you can just use that equipment. You don't have to bring all your equipment and set it up and spend hours setting up. Um, and also, it would be beneficial to the high, the junior high kids because they all learn how to use all this equipment, which would benefit us because then they would move up and maybe be volunteers here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they're progressing towards that. They're, they're going to need, you know, to do... He, they do John does a lot of uh, budget meetings and stuff they do on their own. But, uh, I, I, you know, with one camera, it's hard to do that. You know, and the audio is not as good because you don't have all the mics and everything. So, so it's something that, you know, should be done eventually. They should have something over there for the SAU 90. <clears throat> well, I, um, I, I, I think it's, I think whatever you think is a good idea to let us know about um, putting a lock over there or whatever. How did you think that the meeting went at the fire station the other evening? It, it came out okay. I was really concerned. It's, it was it's very strange. Difficult to do a meeting there, <laughs> that's one thing we should do is get some, some uh, lessons on how to do sound because uh, with that garage, with the echo chamber, and I took everything and I set it up here and it worked beautiful. I go there and I can't get anything to work because it just, it just reverbs off the walls. And then you have the, you have the, the uh, engines going in and out. It, it's a tough place yeah. to do a meeting. I was going to uh, bring this up under old business, but you're here, and I think you're a good example of what, how, what was went on there the other night. Um, and someone that um, fought to get the precinct to turn over the fire station down there so that we could have a fire station, they were always assured, and I meant to come and talk with you about this, uh, Mr. Welch, that they would be able to have a nice meeting there in the bays because they had to settle for a smaller room upstairs. And that room upstairs is actually much smaller than anything I would have ever thought would have happened there because our Hampton Area Commission, which is so small, that meetings, that room is really too small for it. So there's not a whole lot that can happen there. And I think that um, precinct has been very gracious. But the other night, it's, was for, everything went well except for, um, and I don't know if this is something that has to happen, maybe Rusty might know, um, but I'm not sure. Did that fire truck leave while you were there? While we were filming? The, yeah, or w yeah. when you were setting up or whatever. There was, was there, you know the one that returned? Yeah, he, yeah. He was did. that there and yeah. left while you were there? Yeah, while we were setting up and they came back. Yeah. We well, the, um, Fire truck went and did something evidently, but it must have been before the long before the meeting started. Uh, yeah, probably twenty minutes before. Yeah, so I didn't notice it, um, and I can understand that the first priority does need to be uh, uh, the truck leaving or, or whatever the fire station needs, um, and I wouldn't ever have any problem with the truck leaving, but I'm not so sure they had to bring the truck back. Why they couldn't have left it uptown? for a short time, or why they couldn't have left it really there. But I was kind of offended, and if I didn't feel like I needed to be there, I would have left because of the carbon monoxide that filled the room up while all of those people were there at the meeting. 
I didn't hear anyone complain, although I did see Mar Mar Maureen Buckley go behind the fire truck, and I don't know what she did over there. <laughs> but uh, there, it was a problem. People's eyes were burning, um, and I think they could have just left the truck outside. But I don't really know anything about the fire business. Um, the other thing they did is when they went to open the door to get in, they opened the wrong door. So there were people sitting there, and all of a sudden the door goes up, and it makes this terrible noise. I mean, it was scary. It, it wasn't anything awful that happened, but I don't think it had to be that bad it either. It scared people, and it smelled bad. And, and, and yeah, it, that's, that's not healthy. Normally when you have a meeting in a building like that where, you, where you're occupying the floor, uh, and uh, it's a it's not a bad day outside. You're not you're not getting three inches of snow or something. Um, you would park the engines outside and keep the doors closed mm -hmm. normally. If it was an inclement day, I would assume they would move it up to station one and run it out of one or some other location down the beach so that you wouldn't be causing a problem with the people who were sitting there. Well, I don't think there was any real pro problem. I mean, it could have been. If there was anyone there with COPD, there would have been a big problem for them. Yeah. And I think there were a few people there with COPD. Uh, uh, I think th I didn't complain about the noise, which was major. Yeah, it was. But what I am complaining about is I sat through all those meetings that assured the beach was going to have a place to have their annual meeting. And I don't think it should have been like that. This is only the second one. And I think that we would have been well served not to have that quite happen the way it did. Well, I think the town management speaks of the fire chief. I'm sure the chief and I can arrange something that will take care of the problem. But I didn't see anyone complaining. So I, I think everyone wants to work together, particularly the precinct oh, person. I think people. they're delighted to have the new building and have yeah, it down there. And everyone's the proud there. of it. But let's make it as convenient as possible for everybody. Absolutely. Thank you. Bill? No, sir. Thank you. Regina. I was at the meeting, too, and it was a little disruptive, but I agree with Rick that I don't believe anyone there was, you know, too upset about it, but I well, was sitting right next to the, to the door that went up. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it was yeah, really I mean, funny, strange. Yeah, that. but I think, but getting back to you, I think a consultant's a good idea. I, do too, I mean, yeah. consultants are always good ideas. Help. It would help all of us, too. And uh, Channel 22 does a great job, but, you know, like I said, someone new coming in and looking mm -hmm. at what you have going on. Yeah. I'm I mean, sure it would be helpful people. to everyone. I've got one guy in mind that John Justin pointed me to, so I'm going to give him a call and see what he can do. Okay. Yep. You all set? Uh, no, I'm not all set. Your channel team. 22 and channel 13. And Brian and his crew do a great job, a phenomenal job. I'm going to disagree with Rick. I think the cable TV has a great potential and a great potential to grow and to really service the town. Now, when you're talking about it, you're talking about PEG. You're talking about public education and government channel. And, you know, those three things that people are interested in, in providing that. And I think, as I said, the cable committee does a great job discussing it. They did a good job talking about it the other night. <coughs> Brian and his crew do a great job of presenting it. But as Brian said, and is true, they all work full-time jobs. So he does a great job, and he kills himself to come up here and do it on his own time a lot of the time, which is not fair. And, it, and some things might get missed in the process doing that. So I think that's one of the things we have to look at is the potential. What do the people in town want? You know, they voted to give 100% of the subscription to, channel, to the Channel 22. The school wants to expand what they're doing. You know, the government, you know, these guys can expand what they're doing. So there's a lot that can take place here, and there's a lot of potential. And I think they got a good start on it, and a good start on it is bringing a consultant, talking about getting a part-time person, and talking about getting this thing rolling the way it should. How many times have we had complaints that the sound wasn't working, that people couldn't hear it, or when the, uh, when the uh, thing broke and there was nothing? So for about two or three weeks, there was nothing. And these guys were killing themselves to get it fixed. Yeah. But he's got a business to run. And his poor brother ends up running the business, you know, and he's up here doing this. <laughs> I feel bad for his brother. Yeah, I do, too. Sure. But, I mean, it, it, is, it is a great potential, and I think we, we, we have to look at the potential that's there. I also think we have to look at the guys that are doing it right now. How long since they've had any increase in their, pal in their salary? 
you know, how much are they, how much are they doing now? Are they doing it for less than it is? So I think there's a lot to be looked at, and I think the committee is starting to look at it and, and had a good meeting the other night talking about it. I think we really have to decide what's going to happen. The school is going to come in. What that's going to happen with the school channel, channel 13? That's a great, again, a great potential for the town. A great potential for parents to see what's going on in the school, to watch the school meetings, to watch you know for teachers to present things. So there's a lot of potential there. And a lot of growth should take place, and I think we have to look at that, and I think we've got a good start on it. And I think we've got to look at these guys and see if, the, if it's time to adjust somewhat in their salaries. So uh, if I, I'm going to look into a consultant, I'm going to get some prices, and then I'll come back to you on that, how much it would cost to uh, bring somebody in. I have no idea. But uh, I, I do think that's the best, that's the first thing we should do, is get somebody in here and tell us what, what we need to do to fix the minor things. But I do get complaints about the, uh, the picture. And I don't, I'm not going to say I know what it is. I, these aren't cheap cameras, so I'm thinking it could be bounce, you know, lights bouncing off the wall. I don't know. But that's what, you know, and then the sound, see if they can in, uh, do a little, you know, tweaking on that. But I'll look into that and I'll get some prices. So. All I can say, Brian, is you guys, all of you, have done a great job well, I appreciate with what that. you we, had. We try. We try for and we're, we're not professionals. So. I mean, I've seen you in here on a number of days when you should have been other places, and you've been here working on this stuff. Well, I do. I, I'm not saying I and don't you, enjoy it. I you do. care I about this place. People here you care about this, this program that you've started. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of good people that help you out. I do. They're, but I, they're great guys. But I mean. agree, you need to have, it would be wise to get somebody in here to take a look at it, fresh eyes, right. look at it, Sam. And if we do have to hire somebody to do some of our program, part-time programming, well, then maybe that's what we need to, because I agree with Jim. I look at Channel 13 and see some of the programming that John Judson does. And I could see places where we could have police educational right. stuff on there. We could have fire. Rec department. Rec department. Uh, yeah. Pu public works. Yep. We could have the building department. Exactly. You know, when, when we start doing, um, when we started doing the assessing, we could have a, a thing on that, on, on what people should expect to, for right. their assessing. We could have with the tax collector. There's sort of so many things. It's basically what, and I said this the other night, it's what the people want. If people want that, if they're listening, just let you guys know what they want. It's their channel. So, But let's um, let's get forward and, and move forward and see about what we can do for a, uh, a consultant, for a, for a consultant yeah, to come in and see what it is. Because like you said, you're not... No, it's not what I this do. This is not, not your job. Yeah, it's, it's not, not your main job. You you no, do this more. I have no as, training in it. Let's put it that that's way. That's right. But, uh, so, yeah, we'll I'll I'll go from there. Back to us with a with with a price on something, and we will uh, <laughs> hopefully get to that. Yeah, I would like to disagree with uh, Jim over there. I would like to tell. Uh, and bring it up, what a good job you do also. I'd say Channel 22 has changed greatly over the years. I would like to take a look at what everyone is being paid and how it's evolved from there. It was mainly volunteer at the beginning. It's really changed a lot. And I'm not so sure that the people like the idea of having, having two separate people running. Um, I think it's excessive. And I think that you're going to start getting people that there will be complaints. I don't, I don't like to see that um, someone might be working too hard or someone's not being paid well enough. But I'm, I don't feel that I'm hearing from the public that they're looking for an expansion of what happens on Channel 22. I strongly disagree. So I just want to throw that out there. Very good. I'll throw it. I strongly disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Anything else, Brian? Well, if you uh, about the lock, you guys. Um, I make a motion that we. <coughs> the lock. Yeah. Down there. yeah. I think I mean, it needs to be secure. It's it's, it's a good idea. It's mostly second. Good. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> Next part is the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I hate to say it, but it's that time of the year again when we. Uh, Need to obtain a license for our fa favorite four-legged friends. Dog licenses are available at the town clerk's office. Renew now and save it on late fees. Last year we had a lot of late fees. I'd, I'd like people not to have to pay that. Just come in and get the license and get it over with for a few dollars instead of perhaps paying upwards of 100 to 125. We don't make the late fees. The state does because they like to collect them. 
So we have to just pay them over. Um, time is running out for you to obtain your exemptions uh, from taxes for veterans exemptions, elderly exemptions, and blind exemptions, as well as your Hampton Beach Village District tax exemption. The deadline for those is April 15th. I know the tax office has uh, received a lot of requests, but there are probably other folks out there that are eligible and they need to come in. Just come in and ask. See what you can do with that. If you are eligible for it, you should receive it. But April 15th is the deadline. It has to be filed. Uh, the Beach Force Main has been repaired and is back in service. So uh, we're back on that now, and, and uh, they are removing the material that's down to the marsh this week. Hopefully that will be all cleaned up, and we'll be back to a relative state of normalness uh, or normalcy. Uh, updates to the town code have been prepared. Are, have been prepared and are in the hands of our code publishers to prepare and print the updates to the code books. Materials for binding uh, and permanent preservation of our records are about to be shipped to our binding agent. The planning board has completed the update to the zoning ordinances and copies of those are available for sale from the planning board, the planning office. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we did receive a request from SAU 21 uh, requesting that the selectmen make available uh, one of our outdoor uh, illuminated signs uh, for a message uh, dealing with a film that they're going to show at the Regional School of Winniconnet um, on Wednesday, March 30th from 7 to 9 p.m. entitled, Most Likely to Succeed. It's about future and education. Yeah, they would like to publicize that and, and have the, uh, uh, the individual piece of equipment uh, put out on... Um, the state highway just just before you enter town so people can see it as they come into town and of course that needs more approval uh, from from you folks um, we also received a letter from the Quarry and water water company today uh, that I think is something people need to know about uh, they are going to be doing main repairs and replacements this coming year uh, and they're going to start uh, well the first one that's listed here is the Lafayette Road from the intersection with Winniconnet Road down to Drakeside Road. Uh, their intention is to install a new water main on the north side of the roadway uh, from Dan's garage to the mobile station and abandon the existing main, which means they're going to probably need to dig the road up. They, are, they may use boring technology, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. And uh, it's a crowded area out there, so Putting new, new mains in is a difficult task because of all the existing piping that's in the ground. <clears throat> the, um, and they have a problem with, uh, uh, they'd like to abandon the fire hydrant that's in front of the Sacred Heart Church. I don't really think that's advisable because the next closest hydrant is way up on uh, Drakeside Road. Uh, if there were a fire there, we'd need the water pressure as soon as we can get it, so... I guess I consider, my consideration would be to recommend to them and to you that we keep a hydrant in that general area rather than trying to take a truck all the way up Drakeside Road and then all the way back down again and block off Route 1 because you can't run the no. cars over the hose once it's there. Uh, they also <laughs> intend to uh, replace the uh, main on uh, and the services on Manchester Street. Uh, they say they're not going to have to dig the street, at least for the main. They're going to uh, bore a new main and they're going to have to change the services, which means there'll be some digging on the side. Uh, Surf, uh, Sun Surf Avenue, uh, they'll be boring and putting in a new main there, horizontal boring. Uh, and Toll Farm Road, they'll be installing 1,500 feet of new main to connect two dead end lines. Uh, the work will occur in the shoulder so as not to disturb the new pavement that was put on the roadway. So that was their announcement. and. Uh, I referred that to Public Works so they can try to work together to, to solve the individual issues. Um, there will be a hearing, probably advisedly, <clears throat> on Tuesday, April 5th, on poll valuations uh, in front of the Senate uh, a Committee on uh, Ways and Means. Uh, we don't know what time as of yet, but uh, they believe it's going to be scheduled for the 5th. And, uh, and Mark and I are both planning on attending, and we're hoping that others will, or Mark and, excuse me, Mark and our assessor are planning on attending, and I hope others will follow suit and come up and testify, because this is going to 
lose money for the town as well as for our school systems. Every, every dollar that comes off the evaluation is something that does not get raised for schools because the state builds the school tax. That's it, sir. Okay, so do we need a motion for the sign for 21? Uh, you do need to grant that um, with or without fees because we do charge for that. So I make a motion we do it. And allow them no fee? Yeah. A second? A second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Do we need a motion to allow them to dig on? They're not going to break any new surface pavement, so. On Route 1? On Route 1. Okay. Um, but it's been there more than five years, so. <coughs> I would strongly suggest that we send a letter to them that we want to keep that hydrant there. I think that's a good idea. I really do. The, you know, the, you have a hydrant at Winnicunnet Road, and you have one at Drakeside <coughs> Road, and it, there's quite a bit, and there's a lot a lot of property in between there. There is, and, and to lose a hydrant in that general area is a, perhaps a serious matter. Uh, you need to have the flow if there's a fire. So I, I would think, do you need a vote on that, or do you need... Uh, I, I believe you would need a vote on something like that to instruct okay. them to do something of that nature. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Rick, second it by... Jim. 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 Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Jim, all those in favor? Unanimous. Questions for the town manager? Rick? Um, no, nothing right now. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Cool. Thank you, sir. Has Senator Stiles responded? You mentioned uh, H. Bill 1198. Has she responded to you yet? Not to my request, no. Okay. Uh, can you uh, kind of ring that phone and uh, get a response on that? I, I think would it's be important. happy to uh, jiggle. <clears throat> Thank you. Along those lines as well, in the New Hampshire uh, Legislative uh, Bulletin, 25 March, uh, Cordell Johnson writes that um, it's important that we uh, send that same information to the uh, uh, Ways and Means Committee. I would make yes. a motion that we sent that exact uh, email that identifies costs to this town to the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. Already working on it. Thank you. And does that motion require or will that be done? Oh, it's already going to work. To the Ways and Means Committee, yeah. Chair? Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. That's what I have. Thank you. Okay. Regina? I have nothing. Thank you. Jim? Uh, Lafayette Road, the water main. Sir? Um, <clears throat> depending on how much work they have to do, when we did the drainage there, we did a really good job of not interfering with any uh, businesses. Yes. And I would hope that they are going to really be on top of that, that none of those businesses are going to be affected during the day, that people aren't going to be able to get in or out. I, I would hope that they're going to work cooperatively with those businesses and make sure that, uh, that that's coordinated and scheduled in such a manner. That would be our hope, too, because any, anything that's done on Lafayette Road, we've already made the decision it's going to be done at night. Okay. So they'll do this at night? Well... They need a permit from us to do it. That's going to probably be one of the conditions. Okay, good. So I think I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. Rather than penalizing those businesses yeah. along that roadway, <laughs> because they're tough enough as it is without having to have another problem. And I don't have anything else. So, Thank you, sir. Oh, Mr. Chairman, just by way of suggestion, so that uh, Mr. Tinker and I can speak as for the board. If there could be a motion that retains that the board uh, express opposition at the legislature to that uh, that's that bill. Motion made by Jim, seconded by Mr. Bean. All those in favor? Thank you. Okay. Next thing we have is old business. RSA 4114A, a vote to the acquisition of the stormwater drainage and turnaround easement at 88 Lafayette Road. Uh, Levitt Road. Almost. Almost. Levitt Road. This We've already had our two public hearings as required. You have, sir. And so we are looking for a vote now? Um, vote to a, a motion to accept. Yes. So I'm looking for a motion to accept. I make a motion that we accept. Motion made by Jim, seconded by Phil. All those in favor? Unanimous. An RSA 4114A, a vote to the acquisition of a drainage easement at 167 North Shore Road. And that actually, Mr. Chairman, would be uh, two easements uh, at the two separate addresses. One is at the uh, Costello uh, property, and then the other one is uh, the uh, Prado property. And we've already had the two hearings on that. Yes, sir. Okay. So, any other motion? So moved. Seconded. Jim, all those in favor? Unanimous. 
Now we have the policy for the refuge recycling <coughs> collection for condominiums. Mr. Chairman, I hope you don't mind, but we're going to ask you to defer that for a week so we can get the public works responses back. They've not arrived as of yet. Okay. Very good. We want to make sure that we have all the information for you that you need. Very good. Hold that off till next week. Next thing we have is new business. Can I so, bring something up under real business? Please? Sure, certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in light of uh, uh, 1198 last week, uh, and again in review of uh, the uh, 25 March legislative bulletin, uh, we are making uh, headway in our influence up there. Um, Cordell Johnson, I would assume, wrote this. There was uh, traffic sent from this board, copied to you, about uh, the fiscal notes. Uh, they're inaccurate. They're not 100% uh, truthful, and they uh, they lead a path where the voters are not informed to speak to what Jim has spoken about. Um, the last paragraph on page three says this fiscal note process is far from perfect. Well, it's just not accurate, and uh, the costs are determinable, and a system needs to be set up for it. Uh, number one, I would move that uh, we put under useful links on the town web page the uh, legislative bulletin. I need a second. I second that. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. And as that uh, fiscal edge in House Bill 1198 goes, uh, going forward, we can have discussions, Mr. Mr. Chairman, at your board and the town manager, that we incorporate uh, legislative issues uh, in the spirit of what Jim has said to educate uh, the citizenry on our agenda weekly to discuss these types of issues that are uh, um, costing us a lot of money. And I would uh, look for a, uh, uh, I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Okay, Jim, all those in favor? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. On, on that same note, I think uh, as we move forward this year, I would like to have our legislative delegation come in here in probably August before they have time to set up their bills and before you get to that meeting and let us know what or, or have conversation with them, may, see some of the stuff that we may want as legislation or the public may want, and we'll, we'll let them know that. And then uh, going further, once that the LSRs have been put out, and they can come back to us and let us know what the LSRs are that are out there that would affect us. LSRs and are? LSRs are legislative. <laughs> come on, give it to me. It, I can't <laughs> imagine. Either. LSRs are the start of a bill. Start of a bill, good man. They're a start of a bill. Just so people know, I don't know what, what it is. They, yeah. I didn't mean to put you on the that's spot. Fi that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. But they can they can let us know that what 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 is out there for proposed legislation is coming out, and then we can let them know how we feel about that. I think we were a little bit lax last year in, in doing that, and then we can have, probably have them come back again in uh, December or January, and, the, and so that when as they're getting ready to move <coughs> forward for their start their session, that we can tell them how we feel or let our citizens know how they feel. So, thank you. Okay, new business, Selectman Committee assignments. We have the Recreation and Parks Committee. I'm on that this year. I'd like to stay on it. You'd like to stay there. Please. Okay, we have the Cable Advisory Committee. I'm on that this year. I'd love to stay on it. And I will, we have the alternate, and I can do that. That's fine. Capital Improvements Project, CIP. Anybody have any interest in that? I'll do it. All right. I'll be the uh, alternate on that. Okay. The Records Advisory Committee. I'll do it. Okay. And an alternate? I'll be the alternate for that. Okay. The Energy Committee. Now, right now, I know we have an. The Energy Committee is basically one person and one alternate and is there any talk on that do we want to uh, suspend this committee for the time being do we want to uh, town manager can give me a little well they're not meeting obviously they don't have a they don't even have a quorum they can't even achieve one uh, so unless you're prepared to reconstitute the committee which I don't think you are at the moment you need some time to do that I suggest you just pass over this for the time being. Okay, very good. Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce Liaison. I'd love that job. Okay. Unless you ordered it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Precinct District Liaison. I don't think we have one. We haven't. We ha did we have one last year? 
Yes, we did. I'm just trying to find a list here. I believe it was you. Yeah, I thought it was you. <laughs> yeah, I, that's one that we've really never really had. Well, and I don't really think we need it. I, I just think it's, it's nice to have somebody that, that goes to the meetings, and I know you do. I, ke I keep up on it. I don't always go to the meetings. They, well, they're we, too it, early it for says me. We can have an alternate. So Rusty, and, I'll go. And you want to be the? Yeah. All right, so we'll make that Regina. And Rick is the alternate. Yeah. Insurance Advisory Committee. I think I'm a natural for that one, Mr. Chairman. I think you are. Thank you. And Collective Bargaining. I love doing it last year. If you want me again, I'll do it. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. And that's it, I believe, for all that's the committees. That's it, sir. Easy. That was easy. He's right. Yeah. The USS Hampton Committee. We have uh, the Parks and Recreation has sent us a, a, a memo here. Yes. She's been told that we'll be returning to Hampton this spring and summer and have been asked by the town manager to organize a committee under their arrival, for their arrival. I have started with the past committee members. From there, those who are interested in serving again and put a, get and put a group of people together for the committee. <coughs> the names are submitted below are past members and or residents that have an interest in serving on the committee again. And we have Diana Martin, Dan Nassessian, Mike Edgar, Bruce Aquazap, Teresa McGinnis, Kate Pratt, Frank Culbert, Dan Lanio, G. Berkeley Dennett, and Sandy Buck. And I'll take a... I make a motion that we appoint those folks. Okay, do I have a, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Signing of the CBAs. <laughs> uh, folks, there are, um, within each large clip, there are three individual contracts that need to be signed. So you go by the small clips to find each one. Each one's marked. And, you know, and a few out over here. And it's got a few out over there. And while yeah. we're signing these, are there any closing comments? Negative, sir. Seeing none, I believe we need to have a non- <coughs> Public meeting, non-public session, Mr. Chairman. Under and RSA 91A, three Roman two, small C, D, and E. Yes, and Mr. Chairman, of course, that requires a roll call vote. Okay, so we're going to have a roll call. Who made the motion first? I'll make the motion that we go motion ahead. by Jim, seconded by Regina. Okay. All those in favor of roll call? Phil. Yes, sir. Rick. Yep. Yeah. Regina. Jim. Yep. Yes. Unanimous. So thank you very much, everybody.